All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to introduce you to the awesome notion of sequential compactness, which simply says the following. Suppose you have a metric space S, then S is sequentially compact. If every sequence Sn in S has a convergent subsequence. Subsequence Snk. So, for instance, what's an example of a sequentially compact set? Well, in the re real numbers, the closed interval a comma b is sequentially compact because if you're in sequence in a comma b, then by bolzano weierstrass you have a convergent subsequence, and that's exactly what you wanted to show. Or, for instance, in RK, you have boxes. Because again, uh, if you are uh, a sequence in a box, then you're bounded, and therefore by bolzano weierstrass again, you have a convergent subsequence. Or also, you know, closed balls. Okay. Or any, if you want, uh, closed and bounded set, really, subset in RK. And of course, this raises a question, well, what is the difference between sequential compactness and covering compactness? Well, there is none. It turns out they're the same. And today what I want to show you is that uh, covering compactness implies sequential compactness. The other way is uh, um, correct as well, but it's way harder to show. So, go. So, claim uh, covering compactness. So, the stuff we talked about so far, it implies sequential compactness. And the proof is very neat, so well, maybe 10 minute proof, hopefully uh, not more. So suppose, so let's say suppose a set E is covering compact, but not sequentially compact. What does not sequentially compact mean? It means that there is a sequence, a sequence Sn in E, but with no convergent subsequence. And first thing I want to claim is the following. So suppose I give you a point x. So no, suppose every point x, um, it has a neighborhood. So here's what I want to claim. I want to claim that every point x has a neighborhood that uh, has only finitely many terms of this sequence. Namely, if you have this sequence Sn, that neighborhood let's say bxr, has only finitely many terms of this sequence. So definitely not infinitely many. So claim So every x in E has a neighborhood or you know, has some open ball bxr with only finitely many terms. Uh, if neighborhood confuses you, just think ball, so bxr with only finitely many terms of Sn. Well, um, why not? You know why is that true? So um, 
Suppose not. What this means, it means there is some x in E. x in E such that uh, uh, such that basically for all R positive BXR has infinitely many terms terms of SN so in other words if there is some X such that no matter how small of a ball we pick there's always infinitely many terms of the sequence, but I want to show you that in this way we can construct a subsequence because for r equals 1, what this means, the ball centered at x in radius 1 has infinitely many terms of Sn, so pick one of them. So let S1 be in Bx1. Then for r equals one half, okay, well, this ball, so this is x and this is a one half. Well, let s2, if one, let s1 and 1 be in b1, okay, and then let sn2 okay, be in uh, bx, comma, one half. B in bx comma one half, but that is after Sn1. So with N2 is bigger than N1. And we can do this because there are only finitely many terms up to Sn1. So since there are infinitely many terms in that ball, just pick one that's after that. And then and so on and so forth. So in this way, so how what is Sn3? It's a, um, it's a term of the sequence after n1 and n2 that is in the ball uh, of radius one third. So therefore we obtain, obtain a subsequence SNK with Again, Sn1 was in Bx, comma 1, Sn2 was in Bx, comma 1 half, with, so in general, Snk is in Bx, comma 1 over k. In other words, the distance between Snk and x is less than 1 over k, but then this, this implies that Snk converges to x, which contradicts the fact that um, Sn does not have a convergent subsequence, but then Snk is a convergent subsequence. Subsequence of Sn. And that contradicts our assumption. All right, so what do we know? We now know that for every ball, okay, there's some radius that has only finitely many terms of your sequence. But here's the thing, and by the way, the radius depends on x, which is not a problem. But well, since this is true for all x, just cover you set E with those balls. So now, cover, consider the following cover. So, beautiful U to just be the set of balls centered at X and radius R, where X is in E and R is, an, in the, uh, is as in the claim. Well, because X ranges over every element in E, U is a cover of E, balls are open, so in fact it's an open cover, so bang, there's a finite subcover. So therefore, by covering compactness, there is 
a finite subcover namely let's say call it dx1 r1 dot 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 d xn rn all right but that's a contradiction because what is happening it's quite neat you see the whole balls they cover the whole space those n balls they cover the whole space so x3 dot 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 and then xn rn But then what does that mean? How many terms are there in the sequence then? Well, what do we know? We know there are finitely many terms in the first ball. So bx1 r1 contains n1 terms of Sn. And then B, X2, R2 contains, let's call it N2 terms. Again, it's all capital. So capital N1 terms, capital N2 terms of Sn, etc., etc., up to B, X, N, R, N contains N, N terms of Sn. So what does that mean? What does, how many terms of Sn are there in the whole set? Well, just n1 plus n2 up to nn. So, since uh, this covers all of E, there are at most n1 plus dot 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 plus nn terms of sn. Because you see every term of sn has to be in E, so it has to be in one of those balls. So all the balls, they only contain n1 up to nn terms of your sequence, which contradicts the fact that the sequence is infinite. It contradicts that sn is infinite. And therefore, contradiction with what? Contradiction with the fact that Sn does not have a convergent subsequence, therefore Sn has a convergent subsequence, and you said is uh, sequentially compact. So covering compactness implies sequential compactness. The rest is also true, but like, we would take an hour to solve. Uh, all right, thank you very much.